Hello there folks, Deadly Habit here. I am bringing you a new tutorial series on Massive and in general about filters. Yes, these lovely doohickeys here. What we're going to be covering in this series is not only the filters in Massive, but more a general concept of how they can be applied to, say, your mixing bus as a VST effect, um, what they're commonly used for, each type, and other applications and in general just giving you a further understanding of what they are and what they do. Each video segment is going to be presented as one filter type, give you a visual representation of what it would actually look like, and we will be using also Voxengio Span on the side which is a free spectrum analyzer, and there will be a text file which has a link to this so you can download it yourself. Now before we get into explaining specific filter types and what they do and their applications and everything, I think it's worthwhile to explain what a filter is and some of the terminology we're going to be using. So a filter is an electronic circuit designed to emphasize or attenuate a specific range of frequencies. Now if we open up a simple low pass filter on here, we will have the controls here. We have the cutoff, which is a reference to what frequency it is. And we also have resonance, which also is referred to as Q in some filters. And a Q is a measure of the resonant properties of a filter. The higher the Q, the more resonant the filter, and the narrower the range of frequencies that are allowed to pass. Now outside of synthesizers, it's worth noting that resonance is also present in, say, stringed instruments, say a piano or a guitar. If you hit a specific note on one string, it could cause another string to resonate or vibrate. So that's what resonance is, if you weren't familiar with that. Another term we'll be using is bandwidth. As you can see right here, I've opened a bandpass filter and bandwidth is present here. So if I turn on an oscillator, we'll just play a note real fast and turn the cutoff all the way up. Have the resonance all the way down, so if I move the cutoff into the middle, the bandwidth, this is a narrow band. So as I increase it, more passes through. So that is how wide of the frequency band is getting affected. So the further it's up, the wider uh, the band will be, or available frequencies, and if we go all the way down, it'll be a very narrow band. Now, if any of these terms seem confusing to you, or you get lost with any audio terminology I may use, I've also included a link to a page on Sound on Sound, which has an audio terminology glossary. So. If you've ever been confused viewing a tutorial, that's a good place to check. It's great for new people, and it's also great for veterans alike who may come across a term that they have a hard time explaining to someone, or you just have never heard before. Now, before we jump into actually going into the filters, we need to explain how these actually operate. So these are your controls right here. You have next to any of your oscillators, you have an option of where you're sending your signals to the filters. So right here, it's in between filter 1 and filter 2. So it's sending equal signals to filter 1 and filter 2. Put it all the way to the top, filter 1. All the way to the bottom, filter 2. Now if we actually look over to our filter, we have this option here, which is serial and parallel. Right now is it in parallel. And what parallel means is if you send a signal all to filter 1, it just goes through filter 1. If you send it all through filter 2, just through filter 2. Now, that just means parallel, think of it as lines. Um, let me actually go to the routing table, this will explain a little bit more. So parallel would just be the signals going straight like this. So you have your noise oscillators, or your noise um, osc coming through here, and it goes through filter 1, and then gets routed over to here. It can also go to filter 2 if you route it so. Now if we switch it all the way up to serial, what serial does is it will pass the signal through filter 1, and then the signal from filter 1 gets passed through filter 2. So this would be serial. You're coming from oscillator 1 through filter 1, and it would go down here, and then be passed through filter 2, and then up through here. That would be all the way serial. Now you can mix these to taste. Um, also over here, this is how your output, how loud your output or amplitude is going to be for each filter. So if you have it all the way down, even if you're passing a signal through filter 2, you won't get anything coming out the other end. So these you can adjust the taste. You also have over here your mix levels. So you can mix the signal from um, filter 1 or filter 2, which is what you have the control right now, is just 
doing all of filter one. If I have it in the middle, it is doing an equal output of mix one and mix two, which would be filter one and filter two. And this would be all the output of filter two. Now, what this would come in handy for is if you don't want to hear any of the output of what's coming through for this when you're in serial. So the way we have this set up with routing again, I'll explain it, is you're coming, getting your signal coming from your oscillators into your filter one, then it's being passed into filter two, and you're just getting the pure output from filter two. Now, if I had it in the middle, I'd get 50% of the output from filter one as well mixed in. So this would be a pure serial chain. So it would be going through filter one, through filter two, and all you would hear is the output of filter two. Now, another key point to make is the feedback option you have here. The feedback section allows you to reroute the signal from any different point that you have on your routing where you see the FB section right here, here, or here. You have three sections you can activate it on. And what it does is it passes it back through the filters. So once again, um, if we have a signal coming from our oscillator, what would be happening if I have this feedback section turned on and I also have the amplitude turned on, it would be passed through oscillator one, through filter one, insert one if I had an effect there, then to the feedback. Now feedback you can also disseminate uh, what type of mix you want going with that from filter one to filter two. So if I just wanted to pass it straight through filter one again, we have serial, so what would be going on is it'd be going oscillator one, through filter one, insert one if I had an insert effect on, then the feedback loop. So the feedback, we can adjust the amplitude of how much it's going through and it's going all to filter one. So it would loop back again and go back into filter one. Now, if I was to turn the feedback on down here with the serial, it would be going, our signal would be going through filter one, down to filter two, because it's in serial, back to the feedback and looping back around one more time. And that's, it's kind of worth noting that that's a semi-analog feature that it's, it's simulating. So it's kind of like a saturation effect. Um, if you adjust your modulation sources, there's a lot more to it that I went into with uh, my routing video that's also available through MassiveSynth.com. And if you take a gander at your manual, it covers it a little bit more in depth. Now for some of my examples, I'm going to be using visuals from within Cubase with its included plugins. These are all applicable to your own DAWs. It's just an easy way to show you visually. Different filters may sound a bit different, but I'm just gonna be going into the basics with them and how they can be applied to uh, signals and sounds outside of Massive as well. So filters is not just something you can limit to Massive. It can be applied to all your synthesizers and also to just a plain audio track, if you will, with a VST insert. It's also worth noting that Massive has some unique filter types to it. They are enhancements of basic filter types, but we have some that are specific to it, such as the Scream filter, the DAF filter, uh, the Comb, and the Acid. Now those we'll go a little bit in depth with, but they're not going to be so much applicable to uh, general filters as well. But there are also other filters out there, such as um, WoW VST, which have, say, format or vowel specific uh, filters and stuff like that that are not in Massive. So it's it's something that if you're messing with a bunch of different filter types, some have native formats that are just enhancements of basic filters or combinations of filter types. So we'll get more to that when we get in the specifics, though. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. And our first filters are going to be low pass.